The first part of Lecture 3 covers Coulomb's Law. As mentioned previously, chemicals have potential energy stored in bonds, intermolecular forces, and even within the atom. This is because there are charged areas within molecules and atoms. An example of energy storage is between hydrogen and oxygen atoms in different water molecules. This is energy stored in intermolecular forces. Another example is the energy stored within the atom itself, and this is due to the charges of the proton and the electron. So as the semester progresses, you're going to notice how charge contributes to the energy of a substance. This is Coulomb's law of force. The force in newtons is equal to Coulomb's constant times the two different charges, Q1 and Q2, in Coulombs, divided by the dielectric constant, which is the shielding constant of the medium that the charges are in, and also divided by the distance in meters between the two charges, squared. And here, of course, is Charles Auguste Coulomb, the founder of Coulomb's Law of Force. So mathematically, when we think about this, when the charges of particle 1 and 2 are both positive or both negative, the force has to be what? Well, we know that two positives would give us a positive when multiplied. And we know that two negative charges, when multiplied, would also give us a positive. So when the charges are the same, the force between them is positive and also repulsive. I'll show you an example soon. When you have one particle that's positively charged and the other negatively charged, then the force between them is negative and also attractive. I do not have the ability to capture protons and electrons for you and show you how they behave, but I can give you a similar example using magnets. So these two magnets here are going to represent protons. These two magnets here are going to represent electrons. Let's look at what happens as electrons approach one another from a far away distance. Hmm. Do you notice how the electron is pushing the other electron away? We would call this repulsive. They are spontaneously wanting to stay distant from one another. If I want them to get closer, I have to use force to push them closer. And as soon as I release that force, the electron springs away from the other electron. Now we know that things spontaneously will go to lower energy. So if we think of this interaction where zero energy is here, energy represents our y-axis, and of course positive values of energy are here, and negative values of energy are here, and for our x-axis we have r, which is distance, What we can see is that from far away, the two electrons don't sense each other, so their value is close to zero. However, as they get closer together, we have to push them. We have to put energy in in order to get them closer together. So what that means is, as they approach one another from infinity, energy will increase since a force is required to push them closer together. It also means that as they go further apart, energy goes down and decreases, which you see when we push these together and then release one. The same scenario is true of two positive charges. As they approach one another from infinity, in order to get them closer together, we need to put energy in. So energy increases as they're closer together and decreases when they are further apart. Now let's look at 
opposite charges. What happens when opposite charges approach one another from infinity? Ah, let's try that again in slow motion. Do you see how they spontaneously got closer? We would call this interaction attractive. We know that things that are spontaneous go lower in energy. So, like charges go up the energy hill when they get closer together. Opposite charges, like electrons and protons, go down the energy well as they get closer together. If you want to know how can the force become stronger, either more attractive or more repulsive, if we look at the absolute value of the force, if you want a stronger force, you need the numerator to become larger. So large numerator means having larger charges, as the value of K does not change. You can also make the force stronger by having a smaller value below in the denominator. So one way to make force between charges stronger is to either have a closer distance between them, which means a smaller r, or less shielding due to the dielectric constant, epsilon. For example, vacuum would shield charges from each other much less than water would. But here's the bottom line. Things stick together very well when they have large charge and are close together. This brings us to Coulomb's law of energy. Maybe you remember from physics that force multiplied by distance gives you energy. So the energy is equal to K times the multiple of the charges, Q1 and Q2, divided by epsilon and R instead of R squared. So this is our formula for Coulomb's law of energy. So if we start to think about the particles in an atom, when Q1 is positive, like a proton, and Q2 is negative, like an electron, what is the sign of delta E when they move toward each other from infinity? Well, obviously, plus times a minus will give us a negative energy. But we're going to look at the delta E, which is the energy difference, which means final minus initial. So let's think about initial. We have two opposite charges, but they're incredibly far apart, an infinity distance. And anything divided by infinity gives us a value near zero. So the initial energy is close to zero. If we think about the charges when they approach to a closer distance, this will have a finite value, and that value, because the charges are opposite, will be negative. So if we take our energy of final, which is negative, minus zero, we still wind up with a negative energy change. So this means as opposite charges approach each other, they get more negative in energy. And I hope you realize that negative energy changes are spontaneous. So here's a set of questions that ask you to think about Coulomb's law of energy with different sets of particles with different distances. And we want to know which set has the highest or most positive energy. And the suggestion for solving this is to set k equal to 1 and epsilon equal to 1, since they are in the same medium, so that won't affect it. And the Coulomb's constant will be the same for all of them, so that also will not affect the ranking. So how would you go about this? Well, I'll give you a little bit of help. For the first one, the energy is going to be plus 2 times a minus 2 divided by 1. 
So that works out mathematically to minus 4 in the relative ranking. For B, I would have plus 2 times a plus 1 over 2. So when I work that math, it winds up to be plus 1 in the relative ranking. So finish the rest of these, and when you finish your relative ranking, choose the one that has the most positive energy. The same approach can be used for the most negative energy. These are exactly the same set. So after you've done your calculation for the previous question, I know that you can pick the one that has the most negative relative energy. This question asks which set has the most repulsive force. So your first job is to figure out, hmm, is that positive or is that negative in terms of force? The other issue here is that it will not be the same values you calculated for in the previous question, because this time we're asking about force. So we will have to deal with R squared. So just to get you started on the relative ranking, the first one won't be any different, because it will be plus 2 times a minus 2 over 1 squared. Well, that's still minus 4. That didn't change anything. But B would change. It would be a plus 2 multiplied by plus 1 divided by 2 squared. So that's going to change your value from 1 in the previous question to 1 half with a positive sign. So please finish the rest of those calculations, and you should be able to figure out the relative ranking of these, and which one has the most repulsive force.